Hey, what's up, dark people? Today we are in the classes section talking about methods. Uh, this is the Dart language tour where I tell you all about the documentation so you have somebody to go over it with you. Um, this is really just going to be about um, instance methods and uh, operators and I think some abstract methods. Uh, the class methods, they get their own treatment uh, at the end of this classes section. So they will have their own video along with class variables. Okay, so what is a method? Um, really in, 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 in Dart and, and in Flutter, you can't really do anything without methods. If you just had properties and objects, um, it would be like a snapshot of the universe in time. There would be no momentum, there would be no inertia, uh, there would be no orbit, there would be no fusion. Um, none, of, none of that would happen. Uh, there would just be like objects in space and it would just be cold and dead. Maybe when the universe ceases to have any energy, that will be the state of the world or the state of the universe <laughs> a long time from now. Um, so a program needs needs methods in order to do something. Okay, um, the first sort of method that we have in, in Dart is just a function called main. This is like the Big Bang. This is how things get kicked off in our program. It's the entry point to our program. Um, and we, we can do stuff in here. So, so this is how things get done in Dart is through behavior like this. So this is this is behavior defined for the universe that we're in, which is right now just this little dart pad universe. Okay. Um, a class can have um, a function as well like main. But let's call this one just a function. And then it'll print. Oops. I'm just a function. But really what we're doing here is creating a method. And, that, and that's the only difference. Um, so there's our instance of foo, and then we can say just a function, and then run our program, and it should print I'm just a function. There it is. Um, so what I'm showing here is that these things look the same, but the way we call them is, is that this is a function because it's outside of a class. Uh, this is a method. It's a function inside of a class. And again, um, in order to do anything in a program, you need functions and methods uh, so that you can, you know, kick off uh, a reaction of sorts, um, you know, hit the first domino so the rest of the program falls and runs. Uh, main does that, and then we're able to define and call other methods. <laughs> That, that do stuff, okay? So that's what we mean by behavior for an object. Okay? All right, speaking of objects, let's get ourselves, and I, I usually like to have a main below my classes for readability. Um, let's, instead of just instantiating and operating in one go, let's do something like this. Right, so this thing here, var foo equals, you know, new foo, essentially. Uh, this is our instance, okay? And then um, what we have up here is an instance method. So this is defined for an instance of foo. Um, some uh, classes, you'll see this word called static. Uh, that's whenever you want to call a class method, which looks like foo dot class method, all right? It comes directly off the class, not the instance. Off the class, not the instance like that, okay? Uh, so you have to new it up. You have to create a new instance of the class uh, before you can call an instance method. Um, so the methods are objects, uh, instance methods on objects can access instance variables and this, okay? Instance variables and this. 
Um, so here's a little example, but I first just want to show an academic example. Um, okay, so let's create out of this foo class, let's create a constructor. Okay, um, and it said that, well, let's, let's, let's keep it. Mm. Yeah, let's uh, this dot bar, and then we'll create a, um, a sort of string bar here. Okay, I think I'm inviting this to be a final. And why doesn't it like that? A function body must be provided. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> so what I can do is I can say bar foo equals foo, and then I need to pass it a string, so bar is bar in this case. Okay, I'm currently not using it, but I plan to. So we have access to instance variables and this inside of instance methods. So let's define ourselves an instance method. So this would be um, print instance variable and this. So what we're going to do is print um, bar okay, and print this. Right, so because this variable in this class it has sort of like class scope, it can be seen within this class and within every single function. I don't have for every method. I don't have to pass. Um, you know, I don't have to say, you know, whatever this is, ABC, and then whenever I call it, I don't have to say like foo, uh, do this thing, and then pass in bar, because I don't have bar down here, right? So if I pass in something, it has to be from this context in main. Um, here in the class, I. I don't have to reference that bar, right? Or I don't have to say, hey, make this like a default. Um, you know, I don't have to like give it a default or something. I forget the signature for that. Um, I just I just get access to it so I can print it. Um, so after I've created it, and it's gonna be this lowercase string bar, it should print that. But then what is this? When we are in the function scope here, or this method scope, um, this refers to the instance itself, okay? It doesn't refer to uh, the class, all right? It refers to the instance itself. Um, it's almost like, hey, I plan to call my instance foo, so let's just print foo, okay? But we're not smart enough to do that, so we have to handle all situations where you can name your instance variable anything you want. Um, right, so let's get rid of that and run it. Uh, so we should see bar and instance of foo. Okay, so that's what it means by um, they can access instance variables in this. Uh, we can go ahead and look at this example from the Dart world. Let's just get rid of that. So we're importing the math library. We're creating a class called point. We have some instance variables. Um, that we're setting to zero initially. Um, and then, yeah, we're, so we're creating a point, and then uh, we have this instance method called distance2, where we pass in some other point. Um, these are local throwaway variables called dx and dy. Uh, we take the other thing that we brought in. Um, Right, so it's like x minus x, x minus y minus y, and we return a square root. Um, yeah, just for being complete, uh, we can show this. So like bar p1 is equal to point, let's do it 2, 2, and then let's say bar p2, and that's gonna be our other point. That's like five, seven, okay. That's that, hello. And then, what we want to do is say uh, p1 distance to p2. So by printing this, we can see exactly what our distance is. 
Okay. Um, yeah, I had an example from something else, but I, I could show you this. So if you're not familiar with coordinates, 2, 2 would be like right here, and then 5, 7 would be like right here. So it's kind of that, that line between 2 and 7. Okay. Um, likewise, you could, you, there we go. Uh, you can imagine that the distance between P1 and P2 should be the same between the distance of P2 and P1. Okay, so we should get the same value. Okay, so our, our math works. Um, what about the distance between P1 and P1? It should be zero. Yes, it is. Okay, just checking. All right, so here um, it's just showing an example of an instance method and, and, and really that like we have access to these instance variables. Um, we didn't use this in the instance method, we just use the instance variable. Um, all right, hello, thank you, yes. Okay, um, so this next section is about operators. Uh, and it says that they are instance methods with special names. Um, so there's, being able to use these things is, is, a, is a bit like syntactic sugar. Um, Dart allows you to, to define operators with the following names. Um, so I wonder, hmm. Um, yeah. Let's, there's no, well, there is an example on vectors, um, but it's a bit thick. So I wanna do something else. What I wanna do is let's just create this dummy foo class. Okay, and <clears throat> so we're gonna have a new foo object, and I wanna do something like, um, Foo, is it? foo plus two. That's what I want to do. Um, and <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of a weird uh, construct thing to think about. But I want that to return forty-two. Okay. And right now, the you can't really add two or or anything to foo um, because I think it's part of the math library. It's not part of the basic object library or object class that that we come from here extends okay so how can we do this um, so what it's saying is that operators are just instance methods with special names and we can we can define one so how would we define this all right we want to return 42, so that is our return type int. Um, the name, usually we have a, a name like, um, a method name like that, and it takes, right, you know, empty parentheses if it's not taking uh, an, an argument. Let's just replace that with plus. So that's what it's saying is that we can, we can replace, we can use these as instance uh, method names. Okay, and that's all that is. Is there's there's not really any special built-in functionality into Dart. Um, these are just these are just methods, instance methods like no other. Okay. Okay, but the plus it, it needs to take something. So let's call that other. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll say. Uh, return 42. Okay, what am I missing? Ah, so the thing about actually using this that they're not going to tell you here is that you need to use this um, an operator declaration. Okay, so let's add the word operator so that if you want to what are we doing? Uninitialized variables and fields. OK. 
Okay, what am I missing? This should be dynamic. I think that's fine, an object, right? I don't think that that's not making a difference. That's not what it's yelling about. Um, expected to find a semicolon. What is up with you? Ah, I, I think I know what the problem is. Well, actually, I don't. Hmm. Variables. this yeah because I'm not really using it um, yeah, it shouldn't matter ah all right um, so sometimes you just forget how things work um, let's run this Okay, so we're, I don't know where my error went to, but we, we basically get the same error message here. I believe that we need the keyword operator. Um, must be preceded, operator declarations must be preceded. I think that's why I put that there in the first place. Um, but maybe the operator declaration is considered the plus sign actually. Okay, so we have this operator um, and now we should be able to use it. So if we print foo plus two, we should be able to get 42. Ah, there we go. All right. So, um, yeah, if you use this word, it has to go between the return type and, and this. So that's just me getting more familiar with um, the syntax and where the things go. Um, this is a special kind of character I think you can use that's just like a throwaway character um, you know we could have said other and, and it's I think it still would work we're just not using other um, I think this should still work though and if I use it like this it's gonna return two now okay um, but if I do something like Aaron it's going to yell because the return type should be an integer. Yeah, so this is an uncaught error. Type error is not a subtype of int. Um, so I could I could get fancy and say, hey, this this thing can return anything really. It could return Aaron. It can return you know an empty array, just whatever. Okay. Um, so the takeaway is that operators are just um, these are just special named uh, instance methods and you have to use that operator keyword and, and these are the ones that you can use uh, for example we could replace this with a single pipe okay single pipe um, let's return 42 again just for funsies okay so foo bar 3 <laughs> alright that's the bar foo pipe 3 um, it doesn't matter if it's a plus or, or whatever. Um, I think the interesting thing here to note is that these are the predefined ones that Dart allows us to use. Um, there, there are a number of other characters. <clears throat> For example, what if we did, um, this is either an asterisk or a splat. Sometimes you'll, you'll see that, but what if we wanted to do, like we could do splat or multiply. Okay, and that's still going to return 42. Remember, this is just a name and has no special meaning um, in terms of mathematics at this point. But if we wanted to add two splats, okay, I don't think we can we can do that. Um, and we get these errors. We get a lot of errors actually. So it says methods must have an explicit list of parameters. Try adding a parameter list. I thought I did that. Um, I think it's just confusing like what what it's trying to do it's trying to figure out a good error message to send me um, the operator here this should declare exactly one parameter but zero were found okay um, 
yeah, I think. And then that is already defined. Interesting. Okay, wrong number of parameters uh, for operator. So I guess uh, another thing to note about this is that when you do declare or define an instance method with this operator type special naming, it can really only take a single argument, right? So that's interesting. There's this, this thing here. Like it doesn't know if it's a plus sign or it's uh, you know this triple tick business going on here. Um, it just says, hey, you should have exactly one parameter. And I, I think you have to have one. You can't um, you can't have zero parameters either. You you must have exactly one. Um, so that's that's really interesting. All right. So I could I could use that one. And this is this is in the allowed list of um, operators that I can use. Okay. Um, as soon as you deviate from that, so for example, are there two? Yeah, there are two. What if I wanted to do, um, let's call, you know, squiggly, squiggly a uh, asterisk. Okay, can you do that? Squiggly asterisk. Uh, you can't do that. And we get a similar list of bad, bad things. And we can't use a single squiggly. Look at that. The squiggly is there. But it doesn't like that what thing. Oh, interesting. Okay, so I feel like is that right? So they're they're a little bit different. So I was able to use the plus and and this triple, um, you know, arrow syntax or whatever. I wasn't able to use a single squiggly though, because um, one, it like color codes it a little bit different, right? Um, little syntax highlighting is different. Um, I think it also just does not want to take something here. Trying to figure out how to use the squiggly, and so far I am not able to. That's super interesting. I can define it, but I can't really use it. Um, huh? Isn't a binary operator? I don't know what that means. Um, right. Hmm. Wrong number of parameters. Okay. Well, I think that's too deep for us to go into right here. But uh, just know that you can override some and some have a little bit different behavior. Okay, uh, but that's beyond the scope of what we're doing here. Can't analyze every single one. Uh, but anyways, wanted to show you that. Um, you can see here they are defining the plus, um, the minus, what it takes, what it returns. They're using their, you know, their instance variables here inside of these instance methods and down here they call them. Okay, uh, Okay. let's talk about getters and setters. Uh, it says getters and setters are special methods that provide read and write access to an object's properties. The object is um, you know, this property that you define within a class. Um, and they hold values. You know, like right now these are declared and they're not set, but they're set in the constructor. Um, sometimes you need to read those back, right? We want to know what the values are. And then sometimes you also want to change them or uh, set them. Uh, note here that we don't have final. In, in Flutter, you see a lot of the, the use of the word final. Um, we don't have that here because 
we want to be able to reset uh, those, those values. It says, recall that each instance variable has an implicit getter plus a setter if appropriate. Okay, and you can read about that in the instance variables section. Uh, you can create additional properties by implementing getters and setters using get and set keywords. Okay, so let's take this example. Um, yeah, I'll just take the whole thing. Okay. Um, and I'm going to reorganize this a little bit because I want to show something specifically. Um, yeah, let's put our setters together. Right. Okay, the this kind of tripped me up uh, the first time I looked at it. So a rectangle, if you want to build one, you could give it um, like a, a, a width and a height, and those two values should be able to determine the size of the rectangle. Um, this rectangle construction gives you a left, a top, a width, and a height. So it's kind of it's kind of weird. Um, these are sort of like positional things, whereas the width and the height are what are really defining the size. Um, so this is giving us the size of the rectangle. This is giving us a location in space reference point. Uh, let me pull up the drawing, and I'll show you that. Uh, so what we have here, uh, example, is rectangle 3, 4, 2015 is at position 3 and 4. Okay, so 3 is the x value, 4 is the y value. Um, and the reason I'm doing it, you know, I originally drew Cartesian coordinates, but um, this, this quadrant down here, I'm drawing it here because that's our starting point. And then you have a width of 20 and a height of 15, okay? So this is your rectangle. Um, if you want to look at, did I close that? Here it is. Um, you've got here from the Mozilla docs, this is what we're talking about. This is your left, this is your top. Um, that's the distance from a viewport, okay? Now what we're doing is we have these properties called right and bottom, but they're not properties like, like these up here. Mm -hmm. They're calculated on the fly. Um, so when we get the right value, it's just the left plus the width. You know, when we get the bottom value, it's just the top plus the height. We don't need to, um, you know, we don't need to actually store those values. It's kind of like in a database. Um, if you have a calculated value, you don't need a column for that. You just get the, the values you're storing in the database and then calculate it in your application. Okay. Um, right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, okay, so um, just had a brain fart there. So we are declaring a rectangle, okay? Um, so all of this should be familiar with us by now if you've been following this series. Um, the thing that's new is getting the values, okay? So if we say, um, right, instead of assert, because you can't use that in Darkpad, let's just print. Um, now the left is a value. Right, and so we're saying left is equal to three. We've passed it in there. That should return true. Like, I have no problem with that. Um, what's interesting here, though, is that um, we're using the setter, right? So this looks like a property. We're treating right like like a property, uh, but it's this it's this special set thing. Um, what I want to do first is I just want to print like, what is right. Right, so let's print rect right and let's print rect um, bottom. And when we do that, it'll run this getter. So it'll do the calculation. Um, and what that looks like is this. So the right is the left plus the width. The left is three, the width is 20. So we should have 23. 
Uh, the bottom is uh, the top plus the height, which is 4 plus 15, so that should be 19. Okay, let's uh, run this and see if we get those values. Okay, 23 and 19, we do. Um, if we reassign, okay, or use the setter right and change that to 12, okay, what that's going to do is this 23, right, because right was, um, was 23, if we change that to 12, okay, so it ends up coming over here, um, we are going to have to um, change the value of left as well, okay? So I think it's just gonna like shift everything over. Okay, so after we do that, let's again, we know what right is, so now let's just print what is left. Okay, it used to be three, and it, I think it's a negative value now. Yeah, okay, because it's still going to be so many units, right? Because the, the, um, the width didn't change. We're not changing the width. Um, these are constants. We're just changing the position of the right and the bottom. Okay, um, so that is, uh, these are getters and setters. Uh, I want to show <clears throat> one thing real quick. Um, the getter and set, like these keywords, uh, it's just a, um, it's a more convenient way to write a function or a method. Okay, and, and, and this is really why I think they're in the methods section in classes in the first place, is because um, suppose we didn't know about getters and setters, right? Um, all right, let's pretend that Dart doesn't have these things as a, um, as a feature, and we wanted to get the right point. Remember, we wanted to get this 23. Uh, we would have to declare a, um, let's say, get right value, okay? Um, and we would pass in, let's say, the left and the width, okay? And we would return left plus width. So now it's saying set and instead of the getter rect dot right, okay, we would have to declare um, rect dot get right value. Mm, we don't need that return keyword. It also doesn't need to take any parameters okay but why is it complaining it's a type of void it's returning a value um, it's going to be a double at least if not an int um, right okay let's go ahead and run this Okay, so that's 23, and that's what we expected. So let's take one more look at this. Um, instead, let's just call this right. Okay, so it looks awfully similar to our getter, doesn't it? The only thing that happens is this, this function, or this method, uh, with the, you know, parentheses here, um, those just go away and get transformed on the left. Okay, so look at that again. There's a function or a method, and it goes to the left. As a result, by doing it that way, um, we get this nice little feature where we can say rect.right instead of um, initializing it like that or calling it, sorry. 
instead of calling the write method, we just call the write property. Um, but we just were able to do that simply because we've used the getter syntax instead of the method syntax. And that's it. Okay. Okay. It's a, it's a, come on, dude. Um, losing my parentheses every time I uh, erase that. Okay. So this is the uh, write method. Um, rec dot write. Yeah. See, it's just, it doesn't make sense because like, we're kind of expecting this right to be a property. Okay. So use the getter. Don't delete your parentheses. Um, and everything is right with the world. Okay, so that's great. Um, now a setter, how would a setter work? I'm just gonna get rid of this, this one here. We're not gonna mess with the height. Okay, let's keep it with one thing and that'll be super simple. Okay. Um, so we have got Let's create a function that's going to, um, because it's setting a value, we don't really want to return uh, anything. We just want it to kind of like happen within the class itself, within the program. So let's call set right. Uh, it needs to take some value, okay? And then we need to, um, Really what, what that's doing is changing the value of left so that next time we call right, it's gonna use that new value, okay? And there we go. So now we can say, now we have to have direct dot set right. Okay. Uh, let's pass a new value. So what it, what was the example earlier? This was um, 12. Okay, and then I think we got negative eight as the result. Okay, and we will print this value again. So the first time we get 23, and the second time we should get um, eight or whatever it was. Minus eight, I forget. 12. Is that right? Oh yeah, yeah, because we, <laughs> that's the value of right, duh. Okay, so first we get 23 uh, and then we get uh, 12. <clears throat> okay, um, right, so we don't always wanna say set right. What if we could say right dot right equals 12 and then just be done with it. That way it kind of looks like a property, um, again, that's where the setter comes in. So if we want to do that, we take um, this set right. So let's just do that, and we're done. Okay, we don't even have to say it's void um, because it's implied because it's a setter. There we go. So there's our set right function. If we want to make it a setter, we say set right like that get rid of the return type of void. And everything is uh, working well. Okay, so that is getters and setters. Um, there we go. Okay. Um, I wanted to show a couple things Right, we have, um, we looked at that already. Uh, going back to the operators being overridden, here's an equatable library. This is used by uh, Block and other libraries. Um, so this author has overwritten the uh, double equals uh, for better uh, equality comparison, I think. Be right back. Okay, yeah, so we were talking about um, these operators being overridden and or overridden or overwritten. I don't know. Um, and or just just using them in a, in a library or, or in your code. 
Um, so here's some real examples. This is the equatable uh, library uh, or package, I guess. And um, yeah, so here you can see that like um, this is an example of overriding the double equals. Uh, and then here's an example of a getter. Okay, so here's a good, good examples in the wild of um, the things we've been talking about so far. Okay, the last part of this um, section on methods is abstract methods. So it says instance getter and setter methods. Um, these are things we've discussed. These can be abstract, uh, defining an interface but leaving its implementation up to other classes. Abstract methods can only exist, or sorry, abstract methods can only exist in abstract classes. There isn't a, an abstract keyword for methods specifically. They're just abstract methods when they are defined in an abstract class, okay? Um, so their behavior in these classes themselves um, influences what you can do here and what you can do you know, in, in the childs that the children that extend a parent class that is abstract. Um, right. Okay, defining interface. Yeah, so this this interface, um, it, the way I think about interfaces is it's an adoption pattern. If you were going to adopt the class or extend uh, like this doer class, you have to adopt this pattern that they have defined for you. Okay, um, that's the way I think about it. That makes more sense to me than using the term interface. But again, I'm not a computer scientist, so I use different language. Um, the next thing it says is to make a method abstract, use a semicolon instead of a method body. Um, yeah, so I tried this a little bit. There's, there's a few little quirks, and, and I'll show you those, okay? So let's go take this into an example. Okay. So we have this doer class. All we did to make it abstract, okay, is um, mm, okay. All I did was add that abstract keyword. And what that means is you can create this this uh, this method here called do something. Um, it doesn't have a method body. It, it kind of does nothing at this point, doesn't it? Hi. And then um, and then we have an effective doer. Okay, this extends the abstract class, except this one is not abstract. Um, but now because um, because this inherits from an abstract class, for example, if I comment this out, uh, we get an error. It says missing concrete implementation of doer dot do something. Uh, implement the missing method or make the class abstract. Okay, so now it is no longer missing. I have implemented it and I no longer get that error. Um, if I'm inheriting from a regular class, uh, now it's saying, hey, this syntax is not is not okay. Like you have to. Um, you have to have a body of some sort, okay? Um, right, just like that, uh, and, and that'll work. But if you do that, well, hey, you might need to use this abstract keyword, okay? Um, yeah, what else, what else, what else? Okay, um, and, and what this could do is just like print, you know, I'm doing something. Uh, and then in main, we say um, var e d equals effective doer, um, right? And then we can say ed dot do something. Do. S Hello? Do something. There we go. Okay, uh, let's run that. <clears throat> Okay, I'm doing something. Um, we can actually um, have other abstract methods. 
okay, without using the semicolon. So I'm going to create this one called do nothing, just like that. Okay, in my mind, these are both abstract methods. The reason I call them an abstract method, even though that the docs say you have to use a semicolon, is because um, this doer class is abstract. We can't create an instance. So we'll say no worky. Um, doer like that. Okay. And it says abstract classes can't be instantiated. Okay. So there's no way we could get to something like this dot, you know, do nothing. Oops. There's no way we can do that because this, we can't instantiate uh, an abstract class. Um, However, um, this in my mind, so if we can't instantiate it, then, then why would we ever, how would we use this instance method, right? Or this abstract method, because I, I think it's abstract. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't complain, the, the program doesn't complain that we haven't implemented do nothing, right? Um, annotate, oh yeah. The other thing is you're supposed to use this override annotation anytime you override the thing. So like, we have to override it. Um, and when we do, use this override annotation. No, no, hello. You. Okay, so now everything is well. Um, but do nothing didn't have to have an implementation down here. Here's, here's the takeaway. If this is defined like this with a semicolon, it is a mandatory um, abstract method that must be implemented in a concrete class. If you have this abstract method that's defined in this way with empty curly braces, it is optional. You don't have to define it down here. You can, if you want to, you can say void do nothing. Okay, so now I'm defining it um, in my concrete class doing nothing. Okay, um, and it's fine. I'm actually not printing it yet, so whatever. I mean, I could if I wanted to. Um, but I, 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 I don't have to. Okay, so it's it's completely optional. Um, there was a good example of this in the wild. So whenever you are in uh, Flutter. Okay, you have a stateful widget, and at the bottom it has this thing that says create state, um, and then you know return this other class. Um, this is a uh, it's defined here inside of an abstract class. So stateful widget is an abstract class, um, and because they've defined this create state method with an with no body, right? It's just terminated with a semicolon, returns a state. Um, <clears throat> then um, it has to be implemented. So if I actually like comment this out, okay, because my message list is extending a stateful widget and go to my Dart analysis, it says it's missing a concrete implementation of create state, stateful widget create state. Okay, so that's um, that's a real life example. Now down here in the state class, you know, these both come from foundation, which is part of material, or material inherits from, I guess. Or sorry, not foundation, but framework. Um, so let's look for abstract class state. Here it is, okay. So again, stateful widget and the state class are both abstract. Um, but the this one down here, it has an interesting, um, So in its state, now it has an assert inside of its body. Um, so it has something here, but they can be empty. Let me show you that. So something like this, did update widget. It doesn't have the semicolon, it just has an empty body. So this one's optional. Um, the one that is not optional 
is what? If you are familiar with Flutter, you know that the build method has to be um, overwritten. Okay. And again, if I comment that out, it says missing concrete implementation of state.build. Um, so there you go. In the real world, this is how we are overriding these methods um, from these abstract classes. Okay. Right. And that is that is what I wanted to show. Um, yeah, so that's it for uh, for methods. Uh, again, we'll do class methods at the very end of the classes section, um, but that is a good segue into abstract classes themselves, which we will pick up next time. And <laughs> puppy or not, uh, we'll be here making a video for that. See you next time.